Hello everyone, I'm Jonathan, also known as the Medieval Genie, and today we're just five minutes away from my house, and we're in a nice sort of area. Let me just... here we are. So we're looking around this area, which is just a drive leading down. I know the sun's getting a bit too bright to see further, but it's heading towards kind of sort of rural, agricultural sort of area. But we're still in a village, so it's a bit residential. But basically we're just in a nice little pathway. And then on the side we've got some banks. It's not a very shady spot. I mean, you've clearly got plenty of green, lush vegetation. And yet, amongst this, you find examples like this. So this mushroom is known as the Macrolepiota procera. This is also known as the parasol mushroom because it does open out into a sort of large parasol shape. Now one of the things that makes it quite distinct, although the example I found here is rather small and unfortunately getting a bit mouldy, sorry about that, I have foraged a mushroom from here and it made a very delicious meal which was a few days ago and uh, even for this you can see compared to my hand and I am an adult man and about five foot seven inches tall medium-sized hand and you can see that the mushroom is quite large already and this is one of the smallest examples I've ever found of a fully grown parasol mushroom now the very first example I ever found actually had a cap the size of a dinner plate hence this whole macro in the macro lepiota it means it's very large and it's one of the ways to identify this apart from other features I'll go into in a minute you can see that it is of course even in this small example quite a big mushroom you can find some that are very tiny up to varying sizes and of course things like the giant puffball which can get to obscene sizes almost like boulders but um, with this you can still get very large caps now I'll just show you a couple more examples over here now bearing in mind they will look a bit weird because they're starting to get a bit old and are trying to decay so they're starting to get out of season perhaps but you'll see they like growing in this sort of area so this is the kind of condition that we call leaf litter let's go back to myself so with some mushrooms they actually they're not all ones that like growing in mouldy stuff i know in television in cartoons and in comic books and other things i've seen it all represented as mushrooms grow out of old things mouldy things very smelly dank areas almost this negative association but i mean some mushrooms like this do prefer to grow in rotting decay in this particular case they just like leaf litter so just general foliage so you'll see them around lush vegetation but you also see some examples which are perfectly happy to grow in grassland you know where it's just nutritious soil and in that particular case they love nitrogen in the soil and um one of the reasons, side note, that you find fairy rings, including things like this, is because they will have their first generation which grow and then they drain the nitrogen in the soil and then after they've drained it and it's got to a point where it doesn't, you know, it won't, can't grow in that spot twice, then when the spores are spread, obviously they don't spread everywhere. So there's a certain sort of gold zone where it's not too far away from the parent but far enough away that there's plenty of nutrition available so then you'll see a circle of new mushrooms growing around it and then it'll go further and further and further with each generation until you can start seeing them growing potentially in the middle of the circle again almost like rippling in a pool after you drop a stone in and it's because of that effect that's where you get those fairy rings that's precisely what happens these sorts of mushrooms you won't get in fairy rings necessarily they just love growing in areas where there's just plenty of leaf litter so hence it can be quite good for late summer early autumn now the last example I found was actually a bit later than this. It's currently late September, almost early October in Britain. So we're starting to see leaves falling, it's all starting to decay, and it's providing perfect conditions for these sorts of things to grow out of. Um, now, in terms of identifying these from lookalikes, let me just show you the mushroom. Let me get it in my hand again. Here we are. So, looking at this cap, you'll see immediately there is a little button on the top, this brown bit in the middle. That is one way to help identify it from potential lookalikes. Apart from that, you'll see on the cap, there's this, although it's starting to come away because it is an old and starting to get moldy mushroom, you'll see there's this kind of scaling effect, the little brown flecks. 
they'll be more distinct and they'll almost look like peeling, you know, like uh, cuticles on skin and all that. And that sort of peeling effect is because these grow so apparently, I mean, I'm not so sure, but I've heard that it's because they grow so fast that it almost can't catch up with itself and it starts to peel away. But whatever the reason, these mushrooms have that scaling effect on the cap, which helps to identify it. Um, now, speaking of scaling effects, let me try to get this into focus on the camera. There we are. Now, you'll see that there is additionally the same scaling effect on the stem. Now, there are one or two lookalikes, which seem similar to this and I think even have the scaling on the caps, but they do not have the scaling on the stalk. So this is one way for me to know that this is indeed, even apart from the fact that I foraged one and ate it and was fine, uh, this scaling on the stem tells me that this is indeed the parasol mushroom. Now, apart from that, in advance, I peeled it open. So we'll look here, and you'll notice the flesh on the inside, noticing this bit, there we are, you'll see that the flesh is white. Now, some lookalikes have a similar appearance on the surface, but when you peel them open, they kind of bruise, and they come in an orangey, pinky kind of, like I say, kind of a bruise colour. And that slight reddening would tell me that it's actually maybe something like the shaggy parasol, which is not poisonous like you'd see in Amanita mushrooms, but it can cause stomach upsets in some people, so I'd just recommend not eating it to be safe. Whereas with these parasol mushrooms, unless you're someone of a very rare allergy that I'm not aware of, you're pretty safe. Now, in all mushrooms, I'd recommend you cook them before you eat them. But, um, yeah, these are certainly quite nice. So, to summarise, the ways to identify it are, firstly, its size, because of the macro lepiota, it's massive. The scaling on the cap, the button in the centre, and the scaling on the stalk. So, I know here, although I'm not going to eat this one, even though I, I did pick one a couple of days ago, like I said, which was quite nice, actually. Uh, this one is not going to be eaten, I'm just using it to sort of showcase and identify it. And it's interesting actually, because this, I didn't know if I mentioned it earlier, but this walk is only about five minutes from my house, so it's very local. So you can find these in various places, you don't have to go deep into the woods to find it. Um, now apart from that, in terms of its eating, it is very similar to the button mushroom. So it has a flavour of mushrooms, of course, to it but it can be a little bit weak and bland if you're not cooking it with, say, garlic or butter or other things to help give it a bit more oomph. Um, and also it, it sort of leaks out this sort of blackish juice. Again, same as button mushrooms. And it can be a bit of a, a watery, weak taste. But if you cook it well enough and you've got it in with stuff that's got flavour, like say you're doing it in a soup and you've got stuff to thicken it up, or perhaps you're using it in something like a full English breakfast, so you're using things like, you know, beans, bacon, all that kind of stuff, you know, you, and actually mixing it in with flavours, it blends in really nicely. And actually, its weaker flavour can be a boon because it doesn't overpower. You know, you can get certain things like the Trooping Funnel Cap, which is a different mushroom entirely, also quite large actually, coincidentally, which has a very strong flavour and hence it could potentially overpower other ingredients. This blends in a lot more, and its texture, if it's cooked wrongly, especially in the microwave, it can come out a bit rubbery, but if it's cooked nicely, it has a nice, firm, juicy texture to it. So, again, I mean, shop-bought mushrooms are a good reference, but of course, why purchase such things and spend money on stuff that may have been farmed ages ago from somewhere you don't even know? Whereas here, you can just take a five-minute walk down from your house, find a bunch of mushrooms growing on a bank, and voila, you've got some free food. So yeah, that's the parasol mushroom. Um, I don't know I'm doing a video about mushrooms, but it's one of my interests as well as hitting people with swords, so uh, I hope you enjoyed that, and I'll see you later. That's just another quick thing before we go. Uh, this might be interesting if you've stuck around this far. Uh, you'll have a look at this lump of mush, which is a rotten giant puffball. I'll have a walk just a few paces over here, probably before I've even finished this sentence. Here it is, out in the sunlight. Let me get my shadow out of the way. And this, with the weird whoa, dust coming out of it, which is the ancient spores. 
This is also a broken up and rolled around version of a giant puffball. Now, when I first found them, they had already reached this stage, so, excuse me, unlike the parasol mushrooms, I didn't get a chance to harvest and eat any of them because I'm not, obviously, mushrooms, like any fresh produce, you shouldn't eat when it's mouldy. It goes without saying, but um, it was a shame I found it when it was in that state, but it does tell me at least that in this sort of area, there could potentially, for the next generation, perhaps later this year or next year, we will see examples of parasol mushrooms growing out of this general area. Um, giant puffballs, unlike uh, parasol mushrooms, don't really go for leaf litter. They just like any ground that's got sort of nitrogen in the soil. So you'll see them usually growing in fields. So this one might have rolled in might have been around here on the other side of this fence which I'm not going into because it's private property but these sorts of conditions would be ideal and they don't mind the sun they're not like the stereotypical mushrooms that are liking damp and dark places they're perfectly happy to grow right out in the sunlight and there are some examples I've seen in pictures from other foragers you know finding them in the middle of a meadow where there's lush greenery and basically the same kind of sunlight that we're getting now even in late September. Tara for now.